All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Uh, we're talking about uh, effective prayer. Uh, make your prayer more effective. Uh, a man said to me he was swindled of $15,000. Uh, he said, how can I get it back? The man dropped dead. Uh, the man was penniless. The man who dropped dead was penniless. Here's a simple law of mind. You cannot gain or lose except through the mind. All transactions take place in the mind. If I admit I have lost it, I have. But a man who knows the laws of mind, he says I am mentally and spiritually identified with that $15,000. And it comes back to me in divine order. Then it will come back in some other way. A relative has passed on a month later and bequeathed it to him $20,000. You say, when you say it comes back to me in divine order, your subconscious mind always magnifies whatever you deposit in it. Never admit a loss. Uh, Rawson, the famous English scientist, had a student who was a very wonderful psychic. Uh, she had a dream one night. She saw an airplane on fire. There were two men in it. They were burned to a crisp. She knew the time, she knew the location. She asked a neighbor to accompany her to the particular area, and they both decided to pray scientifically. In other words, it doesn't have to happen. Nothing is foreordained, nothing is predestined. The both, they both pray this way. This plane which I saw is God's idea. It's moving from point to point freely, joyously, and lovingly. It's surrounded by the sacred circle of God's eternal love. The whole armor of God surrounds the plane and those in the plane. It is God in action. They remained uh, quietly contemplating these truths for 15 minutes or so. The plane came overhead just as they saw it, what? just as she saw it in her dream. It was on fire. But the men, the two men in it, when they reached the ground, when the plane reached the ground, were not touched. Not a hair of their head was singed. Uh, this is the power of prayer. She, they, she did not succeed 100%, but she succeeded 95%. She did not prevent the plane from catching on fire, but she protected the lives of the two men. Now the woman whom she asked to accompany her, her brother was on that plane. Both men said they knew they were immortal when they were when the plane was on fire. There are in certain uh, there are certain states of mind where fire does not burn and poisons do not kill. It's true that fire burns, but at higher levels of consciousness, fire does not burn. I have seen people walking on red-hot coals of fire, 1500 degrees centigrade, in Ceylon, India, and many other parts of the world. They believe they're possessed by gods. Uh, they are conditioned over a long period of time, and they believe they're possessed by their gods. Uh, <clears throat> a soldier in Vietnam uh, phoned his mother uh, telling her that the doctor said his foot would have to be amputated. Uh, she said, uh, wait until the morning. She said, in the meantime, I will pray about it. His mother was a very spiritual woman. This is called absent prayer. There is no absence in the one presence. There is no time or space in the mind principle. Her, his mother prayed this way. She said, my son in Saigon, Sagon is known in divine mind. Uh, the surgeons are God's men. God is guiding them to do the right thing. The healing presence of the living God uh, flows through my boy, vitalizing, healing, restoring, transforming his whole being. His body is God's body. His life is God's life. And the infinite healing presence, which made him from a cell, is now making him whole and perfect and the healing love of God saturates his whole being. And God in the midst of him is healing him now. She went over this quietly in her mind. You use no effort in prayer. Prayer is effortless effort. 
you cannot add power to omnipotence. Prayer is like painting a beautiful scene on the wings of a butterfly. Uh, she knew it's impossible for her prayer to fail. The me that is the meaning of be careful about nothing. It does not mean negligence or carelessness. It means I know the sun will rise in the morning. The stars will come to the sky. And that it's impossible for my prayer to fail. When you have a divine indifference, your prayer is always answered. Because you know the seed will grow after its kind. This is why the Bible says, The prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise them up. Uh, the doctor came in the morning to see this boy. The gangrenous uh, foot was perfectly normal. His mother's prayer healed him. Uh, you can do the same. Uh, you can help another person. He can be 10,000 miles away. It makes no difference. The subjective of you is timeless and spaceless. Uh, an, an officer who was in the Vietnam Army, army rather, uh, told me at the banquet that he was leading a platoon in Vietnam. He heard his sister's voice, and the voice said, Stop, stop, stop. The uh, soldiers with him heard nothing. It's an inner voice, it's an inner silent knowing of the soul. It's the only he hears it but yourself. Uh, he uh, commanded the platoon to stop. Then the voice said, a mine is ahead. He sent the specialist to check the area. They found the mine. They would have been blown to bits yes, had they gone three more yards. Uh, he wrote his sister in England. Uh, she was a Roman Catholic nun. And she was always praying for her brother. She wrote back. He told her in the letter, I heard your voice three times, and he told her what happened. And she wrote back and told him, I prayed for you night and morning, and at Mass every morning. And my prayer was this, uh, God's angels watch over my brother, bring him home safe and sound. This is the prayer of faith that saves the sick. The Lord shall raise him up. All things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believe that you have received and you shall have seen. And to believe is to live in the state of being. To be alive is something. And to make them something that you can be subconscious, uh, accepted, responded in the voice of a sister because it knew he would respond to that. It may speak to you in the voice of a mother or a loved one. Never in a voice you distrust. The subjective is all wise. It knows all and sees all. It's the ever-living one, the all-wise one, the all-knowing one, the one alone who lives in the hearts of all men. Uh, <clears throat> another instance of absent prayer, a uh, colonel in the United States Army uh, told me that uh, he was on a jeep reconnaissance trip, reconnaissance. And he heard the voice of his mother saying, stop the car immediately. Uh, the officer with him uh, said, what's wrong? He said, I have to examine the car. He said, I heard my mother's voice. And she said to stop. He said, I heard nothing. He got out of the car. The wheel on the right side was loose. Had they gone 10 feet more, they would have catapulted over precipice and have been mangled to death. His mother was praying for him. She was always saying, he's surrounded by the sacred circle of God's eternal love. The subconscious mind detects a voice that you will listen to. This is how you can uh, protect another person in time of war or danger or in travel. The other person does not have to believe. The other person could be an atheist. Uh, there are atheists, for example, who go to Lourdes yeah. and, and to other shrines throughout the world. And you might be amazed to know they have miraculous healings. They tell you point blank they don't believe a word of what the uh, priest or the minister or the rabbi says. 
they have no religious beliefs of any kind. In other words, they don't recognize the supreme intelligence. In reality, there is no such thing as an atheist, because he's always using what he's denying. He's always using his mind. He's using this intelligence within him to solve problems. He's using this power to walk and to talk. The real atheist is the person. Christianity is full of them. An atheist is the person who doubts and questions the goodness of God and the land of the living. An atheist is the person who thinks that the will of God for him or her is something downright unpleasant. That's the real atheist. Now you might say, how is it and why are these people who go to these shrines and religious meetings have a healing? An atheist may be here in this audience and he may walk out healed. Why? He's looking for healing. He's going to a doctor, a psychiatrist, a chiropractor. The man is looking for the healing. He's open and receptive. And therefore, the healing atmosphere of a group of people dedicated and consecrated to God permeates the subconscious mind of that man, brings about a complete molecular change of the subconscious mind and the toxic effluvia of his subconscious mind, we have toxic poisons, are neutralized by the grace and the love of God of the people present, because our minds mingle like atmospheres. And this is why many so-called atheists are healed at meetings such as this and at shrines all over the world. You see, when you go to Shinto shrines, Buddhistic shrines, or Christian shrines, there are thousands of people that go there every day yeah. and they pray that everyone who comes to that shrine are miraculously healed by the power of God. That's why when they go into that atmosphere, it impinges on the receptive media of their mind and they have a miraculous healing. But always remember, they are looking for healing. Receptivity is essential. They don't have to have faith in any religion. God is no respecter of persons. An, an atheist, a so-called atheist, uh, can get an answer to his prayer just the same as you can. The, uh, the God presence is absolutely impersonal. The sun shines on the just and the unjust. The rain falls on the good and the evil. And all men may touch the God presence. And the murderer can be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Uh, Paul tells us that you can be changed in the twinkling of an eye. A mother in Los Angeles sound asleep upon the bed. She sees uh, in her dream her daughter raped and choked. Her daughter was in college thousands of miles away. How would you handle that? Uh, this is a harrowing dream. It's a recurring dream. Recurring. Uh, she uh, was a wise woman. She opened the Bible and she said, my daughter, Mary, is known in divine mind. She's in the secret place of the Most High. She abides in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he's a refuge and fortress. And my God in him will I trust. My daughter is surrounded by the sacred circle of God's eternal love and the whole armor of God surrounds her. And she's watched over by the overshadowing presence of God. She's immunized and God intoxicated. In 15 or 20 minutes, her mind was at peace and she went off into the deep of sleep. As she was unable to reach her daughter by phone. It was a holiday in that city. Her daughter called her the following night and she said, mother, you appeared to me in a dream. You were highly agitated. You were frightfully disturbed. And you said to me, don't dare go out with that man. He'll rape you and kill you. She said, I was shaken and I woke up frightened. This, this boy in the college uh, called up and said he was coming to take me out. I told him.
I was ill, I couldn't go. I told my girlfriend with whom we shared a room about my dream and about this man. And she said, oh, it's only a dream. Oh. Your mother is crazy. And she said, I'll go with them. And he raped her and killed her. Uh, this is again called the prayer of faith of a mother. Or knew how to pray. When you pray, you claim what's true of God is true of that person. You never pray that the person be protected from shell or shot or guns or things of that nature. You do not pray, or you do not pray about symbols. The highest form of prayer it is, is not to think of symptoms at all or sure. of the body. But That's another form of therapy. In prayer therapy, you just simply dwell upon the attributes and qualities of God. And you claim that the love, the peace, the harmony, the healing presence of the living God is flowing through that person. It's harmony, joy, vitality, wholeness, and beauty. But remember, the murmurings and whisperings of the God presence are always lifeward. Uh, you shall hear a voice behind thee saying, saying, this is the way, walk ye in. In other words, it's the intimations, the monitions, and murmurings are always lifeward. They seek to protect you. God speaks in peace. Not in, not in confusion. <laughs>